all right youtubers uh next installment in this video let's uh let's get to it we're going to be servicing the trucks today uh there we go i didn't get that one screwed back on i just had it tacked on so uh let's uh let's get down to it find some tools Don't ask me what I'd done with my nice pair of tweezers. I had a really nice pair that I was using and they've gone missing. All right, let's just set that to the side. And we're going to uh, do these. So let's uh, start, let's get that out of the way, by flipping it over. And you're gonna have two screws in it. Those have to come out first. bottom plate to come off and now you probably should do this before flipping it over one more screw up here in the top <coughs> excuse me uh, cannot stress enough to be careful here because you don't want to uh, bend or break anything and this is the step where that is probably the most crucial thing. Um, let's see now. This little block here comes out in one assembly. I generally push from here from the other side and just push it straight down. <clears throat> forward and then this comes off as an assembly and you can slide this to the side uh, it looks in pretty good condition I will go through it clean out all the old oil and put in some fresh oil uh, this must be some kind of pickup system <coughs> excuse me because I've yet to find actual uh, brushes and look at there second drive band but it only had the one but it has two there it is there's the second one uh, one more thing uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and take these apart but I will not be taking apart the whole assembly um, I'm gonna take them out one by one clean them put them back one by one another thing I need to check the quartering on these wheels. I believe they're out of quarter. Um, and once again, naturally I can't find the correct tool for this. Be careful though, there might be some uh, little tiny washers or something in here. Tiny little screws. I mean, look how small those are. Make sure you're getting all those put up. And like I said, that, there it is. Tiny little washer. So, yeah. Be very careful. Um, this will be repeated for every wheel set on here. As I'm going to go through them and clean them. So, uh, I'm not going to bore you with a hour long video this is going to take some time here today to do all eight of these somebody's been in here before because there's no tiny little washer on that side so but essentially what quartering is okay Let's see, you got your four lines right here. Essentially, when 
this one is pointing straight up. The one at the bottom should otherwise be one quarter turn out. It can be a quarter turn this way, it can be a quarter turn this way. But all the wheels must be the exact same. So if the quartering takes place to this side, all the quartering should take place to that side. It doesn't really matter if the quarter is advanced or retarded. It doesn't matter. But uh, guys, I'm going to stop it right here. I'm going to do these one by one, just like you've seen me do. Be careful when you get to this set, because uh, you have multiple linkages here connecting. Uh, that's the reason I won't do two sets at one time, is because if you ever uh, forget how it goes back together, look at the other one. So guys, um, now if you want, you can go deeper and find more see there's another screw right there and you can take this apart even further but I don't I don't have any need to take it apart it all runs fine nothing's bent so uh, I'm just going to simply clean it and check the quartering if I didn't have a quartering issue I wouldn't even be doing this but somewhere in here I believe there's a quartering issue because uh, when you spin this little shaft here on the uh, front truck assembly, everything wants to kind of bind up a touch. And that, that's a factor you may have some binding uh, or some quartering issues. So we're going to pull these out one by one, check the quartering on all of them, re-quarter if need to be. I will not be doing a video on quartering um, for the simple fact I don't really know enough about quartering to uh, try to educate anybody on the subject essentially I know enough about it to uh, to tinker with it so that's what I'm gonna do today is tinker with this just a touch and see what uh, what I can get going so uh, <clears throat> without further ado I'm gonna stop this video and commence. Um, I will uh, pick the video back up when I do this one. It's slightly different because you have the cow catcher and front running board. But other than that, the uh, they're almost identical. This one here has a slightly different design. Um, this one here has a slightly different design, you know. But other than that, they're they're very very much the same so uh, what you do to one is what you're going to do to the other essentially but uh, one thing I will do when I do this wheel set I will stop and show you how to put these bands on so guys uh, give me a little bit and I'll be back alright guys I got that first set of wheels out I got them all cleaned and uh, all that good stuff now let's move on to the second set and hope that they're not too big of a peel. So far they're not a big peel because that, there we go, that screw there, or actually this is a bolt because there's a nut on it. Didn't want to come out. So. Let's, uh, let's try not to get things in a jam on the other side like I just done there. Let's see here. There's the bolt in the bucket. And let's see if we can't figure out the order of operations here. That one. That one. And that one followed by that one. It's a lot of connections. And that's the reason I'm glad I record this. Because honestly right now I believe it should go one, two, three, four. 
But honestly, I've already forgotten. But let's double check that. We got this one for that. So it does go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's the reason I don't like to uh, try to take both assemblies on something like this apart at the same time. All right, let's get it over to the other side. Oh, one more thing. I checked the quarter on this one. It looks pretty good. Um, if it's off, it's off by a fraction, and uh, I don't don't believe that's the one causing my binding and my problems. But uh, I will get to the bottom of that. And there it does. Like there's a little binding in it somewhere. And at the same time, uh, when I originally tested this locomotive, it had it did that little wonky wonk dance, you know, kind of wanted to jump left and right. And that is a, a key sign that there is possibly quartering out of whack. And there's the next one. Now this is your actual driver. Um, this one's got gears on it and actual pedestals. Be very careful on um, this stuff once it comes out and hits the floor, you'll never find it again. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can get you one of these out. There we go. Uh, it's not coming out without uh well, maybe it will. Like I said, this is an unnecessary thing. If you don't need to, don't remove this. Do not remove that unless you have to, because now you have to actually get it back in, and you could damage something in the process of just getting it back in. So, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys how that comes out, and that's how that comes out. Um, as far as cleaning wheels, uh, let me go ahead and just clean this. All I do is, this is lacquer thinner. Uh, and all I do essentially is just go in there and make sure there's nothing on the gears. Get all the old grease, oil, and grime out. You know, just paint it in there until uh, it's nice and clean. Once I do that, you know, uh, I take a, a cotton swab and thoroughly wipe everything down. Um, I do this to make sure I've gotten all any or all chunkies out of the, uh, the grooves. Um, I've had that happen before on uh, locomotives. You see that? As a matter of fact, I'm already lost it, but uh, I just got a chunky out of somewhere. Don't know where it come from, but little stuff like that, that little chunky piece right there is all it takes to, to bind this locomotive up enough where that motor will not turn it. And, and if you're wondering, you know, all it takes is something like, like that piece of trash right there. It's already gone, but that's all it takes. You get in here between these flywheels, or not flywheels, but these uh, worm gears, and that's a wrap, Jack. You don't have to take this thing apart just to figure it out. You know, and so I try to uh, be a little meticulous about uh, when I clean gears. You know, oh, by the time I'm at it, before I uh, stop recording, because uh, I'm going to show you putting this thing back together next, and that's going to be it. This little block comes apart. You're going to want to clean this, most definitely. So, like I said, in order to clean that, once again, same thing. Let's come here, run you some good 
cleaner in it. And like this, this is just what you see this dirt floating around. That's only one set of wheels. Essentially, and the uh, the mainframe. That's all that that little bit of dirt, or that lot of bit of dirt was in just that little space. So it doesn't take much. But uh, guys, like I said, just take your time, brush it down. You don't have to use lacquer thinner. You can use about anything that won't destroy the plastic. Uh, these I got the cleaning because they had oil residue on them and it pulled the paint off. Uh, but that doesn't matter because they can be repainted. Um, I had to repair that anyway because there's a nice crack in the front. So I'm gonna have to put it back together and uh, let's go ahead and just knock that one off and get behind it. Um, gonna have to do some Bondo work to get it pretty. So like I said, I wasn't worried about the paint coming off of that one. Now this one, the other one here, on the other hand, I do not want to lose any paint on that. I don't feel like taking all that apart to repaint it. But uh, guys, like I said, just get in between everything and chase out all the grease and grime. And if you feel any gritty um, in between, whenever you put it back together, you're gonna wanna keep cleaning it, possibly change your fluid out and uh, start over if you get that uh, gritty feeling going on inside so guys um, I, I really hope this is helping um, I know there's a lot of people out there wanting to service a big boy um, a special older model with Rossi and they can't because you know there's there's no help and a lot of people are intimidated by this and I will not lie to you and say uh, this doesn't intimidate me it intimidates me but it doesn't stop me you know Worst comes to worst, I can't get it back together. I have to pay somebody to put it back together. You know, that's worst case scenario. Do I want to pay somebody to put it back together? No. But I definitely want to see this thing working. So, I uh, just took a crack at it essentially and here we are now. You know, short rows of uh, a rebuild. So hopefully sometime in the next couple hours I can actually start reassembling this thing because uh, I'm ready to end these videos as far as the repair part is concerned and start focusing on the uh, rebuild and uh, uh, as far as I feel I think uh, for what I've done so far on the repair side of things you should be able to uh, fix your locomotive now but uh, guys I'm going to uh, get off of here for now and uh, oh yes I forgot I did tell you guys I would do this repairing and replacing that little band drive motor or a little band drive on the wheel first things first you got to get it out and I like to take a blade, put in between them, or, or in between the flanges, and press it. Essentially, pinch it between my thumb, like so, and with the blade. And you see right there, see her come up, and you can get underneath it. And that old traction tire is out of here. Yep, that's nasty. That is nasty. Let's give uh, the flange a quick cleaning. Just to uh, be safe and sure. Let's dry this off right quick. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm using a Q-tip to dry this off versus the uh, paper towel. See? See? You see? And I don't think I have one on the other side now. So, yep, that's supposed to be a tiny little sleeve on. 
somebody's been in here and that that piece has gone missing um, I will eventually find a new one um, even if I have to go hunt down some brass but yeah I thought we were experiencing some problems oh wait 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 nope well we have a washer in there but that's it mm, yep that's another thing guys be very careful um about handling these because like I said well there we go put those two out now I guess but uh there was a washer hiding in there that I didn't see. Still not the little piece that should be in there, the little sleeve, but I didn't want to take them this far apart. But let's uh, let's press on. Let's get the uh, traction tire on. Now, some of these are uh, universal and some of them are not but uh this is technically what it's, it says they're made to fit sizes and one assortment uh but it doesn't say anything on here about the uh big boy it says there's the challenger heavy pacific the hudson and the 2882 mallet. So, but uh, I may have got the wrong ones. They look pretty sad. Now, something I like to do now, before I start this, there's two tricks. One, warm it up. You can uh, leave it setting in hot water, but then you have to dry it, and by the time you dry it, it's gonna be cooled back down. So I like to just stick it in front of a, uh, a small heater or something or another. It doesn't take long to heat this thing up. But uh, if you notice, they're, they're egg shaped. We want them round shaped. So I like to get as much of that out of it as possible. Uh, there we go. Um, all I done there was just turned it inside out but I'm still not happy with it because if you look, there's that, that crook in it. You know, that's the downside to these, is the crook. So let me hold it down here in front of the heater for a few minutes, get it hot, and then I'm gonna show you how to stretch it up over that wheel. Getting it hot, hot part is, you know, that's just a personal preference. You don't have to actually do that. But you do have to do this to get it on. Take two screwdrivers, hang it on one, and take the other one. You see here what we're doing? And you walk them around, giving them a little stretch. Just a little stretch not a whole bunch but yeah you're gonna want to stretch this and once you get it stretched come here be, be quick about this because uh it actually goes pretty fast i'm um, taking this walk it all the way around and that's that now you're going to want to go back around and make sure you're pressed into that flange all the way around. Um, you may have to trim a little something here and there to get it down. They don't cut these as proper as they should if you ask me. But this one's actually dropping down in the groove pretty well. Um, like I said, you might have to go in and 
help it a little bit. Um, it does shrink up a bit as it gets uh, colder. It will shrink up. So, but uh, guys, that's essentially how you do that. And like I said, I take and walk around the perimeter a little bit with the uh, screwdriver and kind of press it down into the groove and after a little while now I don't do this right away but after a little while let me let me take this off five minutes if I can't get it to go down in the groove properly I'll set here real ginger light with a real sharp blade and walk around it and remove uh, a little bit at a time you know see that little tiny sliver coming off little slivers just like that I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a little sliver right there that tiny little sliver was what was keeping that corner from falling down into that groove so you know you have to be careful about that if uh, you run across them don't hesitate make sure your knife is sharp line it up and just press see there's another one right there I can go and tell you now that's going to be a peel a little snip off of it not much it does not take much see just a little shave and I, I've run into this problem with the diesels the steamers you know it doesn't matter this is a common problem when uh, replacing these drive bands so guys um, like I said I'm gonna leave you there on this um, I'm gonna get the rest of these parts and assemblies cleaned up uh, I don't think there's any need to really show you how to take this one apart it's the same way as this one um, everything cleans even the little gear, the gearbox that's uh, getting cleaned here there's one of those inside of that the only real difference is in this one and this one other than the big front um, there's this little pickup essentially and like I said this one's this style this one's this style other than that they're same I can't tell you much difference in them so guys let me get this stopped so I can get this video loaded for you guys and uh, as always like comment subscribe and leave a comment uh, as to any suggestions you think might help I always love to hear from my fans all right goodbye all right now let's get back to it let's put uh let's put them together and this should be the uh final step and this we have a little bit of oil for oiling um went ahead and got that put back together and glued uh the paint stripped off of this whenever i went to uh clean the oil so but uh i still like the color of it i'm gonna leave it like it is and uh, go from there so first things first let's turn it over uh, we got these two cleaned let's get them dropped in first check the quartering on them they look pretty good so uh, hopefully I don't have a quartering issue and let's see they seem to turn without binding so I don't think I got a quartering issue uh, it might have just been dirt in them I'm hoping that's all that was because I really don't feel like taking these back apart to find out if it was or wasn't a quartering issue um, actually I think I'm going to start with this assembly here so let's uh, see what it's going to take to get them in. Let's see. All right, I think uh, I'm going to start by putting this screw in first. I'm not 100% sure if there's a 
particular pecking order to get these back together. So if this um, order here doesn't work, I'll just put them together in a different order of operations. So, well, come on, get started. That can be the uh, most difficult part sometimes, getting this stuff started. Let's see, where's, which one of these screw holes does it go in? I'm going to try, I think it goes in this upper one here. looks to be the one so in order to uh, get them in let's take a look here and see where everything actually goes well what you know there's a slight variance in these I think that goes in there that needs to go in That hole, come on, line up, line up, we're all around. Well, let's see, let's try getting it under first. There we go. You know, these connecting rods in place. All right, let's see. So, yeah, we got. Those connecting rods in place. And okay, let's uh, see something right quick. I'm trying to find out if it's the front hole or the back hole that this screw is going to line up in. And according to this, I really can't quite tell. Uh, so let's uh, let's see here. I don't think it's the front hole because I can't get it to move forward enough to actually use that hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Try it again in this back hole. And if it doesn't line up right, like I said, we can always play with it and get it to line up in that other hole. Let's see, now, that's not right. It, it's too far back in that hole. See, these have to all go into place. So, I'm about sure it's that front hole. Work on that a little more. I believe what it was was it wasn't lining up correctly somewhere, letting it go all the way forward. There we go. Yep, yep, that was it. Something's not lined up here, so I've got to get this. Let's see. You should be hanging down like that and you and you are both hanging down get you lined up in that hole check so let's see I'm not lined up there I don't believe no. Now there's four holes in total. There's two lined up. Three lined up. Four. All right. There we go. All four of them lined up. So yes, it does use the front hole. All righty. Let's get that screw back in place. Get these tightened down. And we should be able to move on to the next step. 
already. Let's uh, check these. All right, we have articulation like we should, and that is already better used to. This has so much slop in it, I mean, I mean, it wasn't even funny how much slop was in this assembly right here alone as this stands. Uh, she's gonna need some more. That might be where my binding was at. Oh, that's not break nothing. We can help it. But yeah, this is really sticky. And I'm, I'm really thinking there might be some trash in here. And that's been what's causing this side to bind. And the more I look at it, I think somebody has tried to glue something in here. How's this side? That's as far forward as that goes. Let's check this side. Yeah, look at her. Full. Back and forth, back and forth. This one on the other hand, ah, let's see. Let's see about that now. Well, it moves a little easier. But it should be going all the way forward. I just realized this one has a another broke part right there, but it ain't no big deal to me. Let's see. <laughs> Alright. Let's try a little bit of oil. See if that don't help the party. Ooh, a little bit better already. Much better, much better. Let's finish oiling it up and uh, we'll go from there. Don't forget these little joints need a little oil in them too. Not much, but they need a little love too, man. Can't forget them. Uh, Much better, much better all around. Get some more on this side. Set down. And oh yeah, much better, much better. Work these in a touch. Get that oil moving around in them. I don't think they need to go all the way forward like that. I think this is the maximum range. But that one are loosened up a ton. Um, I'm still not happy how it sits on that rail. It's almost like it wants to come out. Let's see. Always, always don't hurt to take another look. I'm just, uh, I'm not seeing anything that would be a problem. Uh, nothing seems like it would be a problem. So let's uh, proceed on with the next step. Okay, there's those two. There's those two. Now, for these two. Let's get them in. Um, guys, honestly, there's something I didn't even think about till just now, but I don't know if there's correct orientation, left, right, right, left. Uh, I didn't 
thank the tech. But now what you do want to do before you go any further is uh, I didn't disassemble these wheels but all the same make sure they're tight one of the biggest problem on these steam locomotive is losing these now I mean like you don't McGilla gorilla these damn things you just give them a little a little care you know you ain't got to do much for them but uh too tight and you'll strip them too loose and well too loose is just that too loose what is that going on? Oh, seen something. I've never had a bottle as ridiculous as this one when it comes to standing up. For some reason, that bottle of oil just does not want to stay standing. So far, so good. I wonder if there's anything in here wanting to bind. Let's do it in that first before we do anything else. Before we move on to the next step, you always test what you got, and that is rolling real good. I'm gonna wait till I get all these in to actually do the oil. So we should have four that connect back to the one. Now, let's double check that uh, we're at least looking halfway oriented. I'm straight out, and then that one should be straight down, straight down, straight down. Because uh, if you flip this over, it could easily become the other way around. So down to them drivers now all right there they are now for this one we're going to use something different i'm not using that oil for this uh, i will be using some grease come on but the reason i like the grease here versus the oil is for a different reason um remember that tiny little actual shaft that goes on here well the grease will hold it on a lot better than the oil will um, for installation because when you turn it upside down like this with grease the grease will actually hold it um, there's some jobs I've worked on um, mainly rebuilding transmissions you actually have to use grease as your glue for assembling, you coat the assembly in grease and you stick them together and then you can turn them upside down and put them in there and the parts don't fall apart. And uh, like I said, you actually use grease as a, uh, a glue, assembly glue essentially. All right guys, let's figure out how the order went. The back one goes first. So let's get this one on first. And yes, there was a washer in this lot. I'm leaving it out. I'm going to um, opt to omit it because it's already missing from the other side. Let's get you on there any way we can. All right, that's a start. Go ahead and try to get it on the other side too, just so they all remain quartered correctly. All righty. Now we got these two well, working correctly. Let's get this out the way and this out the way so we can spin them over and test them. Nice and smooth, real smooth. What's pushing you out the way now? That. All right, let us stay out the way. Nice. What is turning that side? What is in the way, naturally? Something that always got to be in the way. All right, let's try this one more time. Make sure nothing's herky-jerky or jumpy. Smooth. All right, make sure your quarterings halfway. 
align, check. That one was first. Which one is second? That would be this one here that connects the other set of wheels. This one here. Oh, come on. It can be worse in some days. There we go. Now it's these two. They get set. So let's put you in here. I'm going to put you on. There you go. That was one side. That's the other. That's two. And I, if not mistaken, curl. This is three and four. Well, three, and then the, the little last one hanging around down there is number four. The one that's actually getting in my way right there should be number four. Alrighty. And then we shouldn't have to do no other sights come off, but that's okay. Shouldn't have to do nothing now. More than put the screws back in. But I think these are cammed. They look cammed. And they are. So let's back that off. Okay, and I just realized this. This has got a. Okay. All right, I'm gonna cheat here. I'm going to put that plate back on the bottom uh, for a second here. And hopefully, this will help keep the wheels in place. What time I try to set them then I can open it back up and put that worm gear box back in the bottom all right so let's start here what I was showing you is if you notice this has flats on each side and they're gonna go in that um, I just noticed that I didn't notice that when I was disassembling it but uh, yeah see this is what I was telling you about if you would uh, get that quarter wrong, you see what we got going on here? Watch that. It's not going all the way around like it should, and that's because the wheel on the other side is not hooked up. Um, if they're not hooked up, that's what happens is you get a push and a pull, and a push and a pull. So make sure you get these things hooked up right, <laughs> or you're going to end up with that. So let's go here. Get this thing here turned around the right way. Oh, what you got. And presto. That's that side. Now, this is probably going to be the most difficult part of this entire challenge. Get in these tiny little screws to thread in there. And actually that wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad at all. Get them in here snugly and then I'll do the other side and we'll give it a test before I open that cover back up on the bottom. And uh put that worm gear back in it. Hmm. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I've chosen to omit that little washer for now. If it runs fine without it, we're just gonna continue to leave it out. Um, but if it acts like it wants to get a little chunky, I will take this apart and put it back in. But, 
I don't think there's any need for this. Uh, well, actually, as I see the, the lip protruding now. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna leave that one on this side instead of omitting it as well. And start by getting these put in the right order. There's one, two, three, and then number four, right here, the oddity. There we go. Guys, I'm telling you, I love working on model trains, but something I've never enjoyed about model trains is having big hands. Big hands, tiny parts, horrible combination. <sighs> Not that it's a good combination, but even working on big parts, you know, uh, working on cars over the years just uh, present its share of troubles too so but come on come on line up and we have alignment now for this screw the other little one Screw started. That's come out of place again. So why don't I try to get this screw down as far as I can get it? Oh, this is another thing I need to check. Uh, you see, this one's pointing down. I need to find out if that one needs to be pointing up or do they need to be pointing in the same direction. So let's take a look. That one's pointing up. That one's pointing down. So yes. They need to be offset of each other. And now, if I could just get this one line back up. <clears throat> bind already I can feel it where are you where are you binding right there right right there hmm something's binding still Something's really binding. Hmm. Yep, yeah, this has got to. Got to stay down here. Let's figure out how she works. I know she stays stationary. And that whips around. That punches that back and forth. So by that not being stationary, it's letting it move. So no matter what, you should be up high. You never go down that low on this side, do you? Yeah, you do. That's you pointing down. Hmm. I 
all this is mainly because of that sleeve I didn't want to omit. Um, which at this rate I'm probably going to actually omit the damn thing. Um, it's getting to be more trouble than what it's worth. It's keeping me from lining up what I need to line up. I know one thing, I feel sorry for the people that originally had to put these things together. Now I see why they come apart, um, essentially. Overall, this is a fairly simple locomotive to work on, I will, I will say that. I was a little intimidated at first about it. Um, but now, you know, I'm not. I actually found it quite easy. Um, I did know this part here was going to probably give me a, a round. And it's trying that. And I think I got it. I think I got my placement right. <laughs> Tighten this one on down. All right. So I'm going to go through here and snug up a few of these just to be on the safe side. Put this, this, and this in here. Okay, we have binding steel. I'm trying to figure out who it is and where. So, alright guys, I'm going to stop this right here because I got to do some exploratory surgery. But that is the gist of how this thing goes back together. Um, I'm thinking it's this one because... Uh, when you spin these around, uh, they kind of want to stay parallel to a degree, and this one ain't parallel where that one's parallel. So, like I said, I'm going to play with this a little bit and see what we get. So, guys, bear with me. Alright, guys, so after playing with this for a few minutes, I, uh figured out where the bind was at and it was definitely in these little fellas here they do have to be cornered and caddied right don't ask me the exact sequence um but what is was happening was it was shoving the rod against the plastic here and uh <clears throat> wasn't allowing it to finish turning that may have been the binding issue i had all along uh let's go ahead and get on with it uh, for this I will be using oil grease mainly because grease stays in better make sure I get a little grease down behind all the bearings you don't have to use your fingers for this it's just how I like to do it get all that nice and greased up that on there. Let's clean the dab of grease off our fingers. All right, now the larger hole goes toward the top up here, and the smaller hole goes toward the bottom in that plate right there. So when you put this together, make sure the post is sticking out of that hole for the larger one up top. All right, I'm gonna put a little grease down there, just a little. I'm gonna finish putting the rest of what's hanging off of that tip down here. Put the two together and let's give it a spin, make sure she spins good and we have a good spin. Now, getting this in can be a touch tricky um, I don't know if there's a particular method for it I like to 
kind of drop it in place. Let's make sure she's squeezed together good. Let's see. Kind of drop her in place like so. Press and turn and then pick up on these last two sets of wheels just a little bit and kind of walk her on in. And there she goes. She's starting to go in. And I've checked this before, it doesn't matter which way it goes in, but in this case it may go in easier the other way. So let's try to get it in first this way. I said, once you get it like this, there we go, she's a going kind of work your wheels and your gear all at one time and get it to shove down in there. Um, I believe I left this setting in the cleaning solution too long and the plastic is swollen a little bit but there it is it's in and let's give it a test run right quick before we completely put all the screws back in it. But uh, it should run fine now. Everything's going back into place. Everything up until now has spun pretty freely and Okay, our wheels are holding in place like they should. So now, whenever I turn the worm gear, we should. And in fact, we're getting movement. So. And it is actually a quite bit better and easier to turn than it originally was. I'm not feeling any snagging. Um, originally what was going on was it'd get about three quarters of the way through the turn and then it'll want to snag on me on something and it's feeling better, much better already. Uh, now that I've got it tested, everything's working fine and it seems to be working good. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to disassemble this, but I'm going to take this plate back off, put some oil in all the touch points, make sure this here is uh, got some grease in it. I'm going to put oil in along with it. So uh, I got grease and oil in there. But uh, guys, that's that. That's a full assembly. Uh, this one is pretty much the same way. Uh, now, when you take this, I will go ahead and show you this um, for this one. Uh, find a screwdriver, there we go. When you take this loose, be mindful because there's a spring here. And I'm gonna show you how to take the spring loose from this whole assembly. Other than that, they clean the same way. They come apart and go back together the same way. Take these two screws. Out. And there we go. On each end of this spring is a hook and loop. Now, you shouldn't have to take this loose unless you just feel like it. Um, no need to take it apart. Don't take it apart unless you got to. I will put a little drop of oil between the axles, but I'm not going to take this apart. I'm going to just keep this set to the side because I still got to take this one apart and clean it. I guess I'm going to do this off camera because it's the same as this one, same process and all of that. Uh, so guys, don't forget, just, uh, you know, if you, you can't figure out how this one goes back together, just take a look at that one. But uh, like I said, the reason I don't take them both apart and clean them both at the same time is just in case something happens, I have to uh, take them apart or need some instructions, put them together, there's my instructions.
So, guys, I'm going to get this video edited up now because I think it ran three parts long and they're going to have to be fused together and sometimes going to have to be cut out, um, stuff like that. But, guys, I really hope these videos are helping you. Um, this should be all as far as you should need to know to take care of a River Rossi big boy. But like I said, this is as far as I'm going as far as repair. Because now it's going to be strictly rebuild. Um, like I said, this is getting remotored, redone, uh, DCC and some all that good stuff. But uh, anything from this point on is going to be modifications. So, you know, guys, if you're interested in watching me finish modify this, uh, stay tuned. If not, this is where your lessons end. I hope this really helped. All right, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, check us out later for content.